Hi everybody and welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the break, got your coffee, got your tea and you're all geared up for the next half of our conference. Up next we've got Sandra Hulu from Zalika. Uh, she's going to be talking about the user experience side of Web 3.0. So I won't take up any more of your time. I'll, I'll head out. Thank you so much for that nice introduction. It's really good to be back here again. Hi everyone, how are you? I hope you're well. Uh, just because uh, because just before I start, I want to say <clears throat> apologies if I'm coughing a little bit. I, I'm recovering from COVID, so my breathing is still not 100%. Um, this is one of these sessions that I'm really excited about because I think going back to the history of blockchain, we need to really understand what the core focus was and how blockchain came to be. So if we look back at blockchain, devs and academics who didn't really pay much attention to the mass adoption, I guess you could say, or capabilities with barriers to entry thought about, and that is the UX UI. If we break down what UX UI is, it's the way that customers interact and the customer journey with any kind of touch points or pain points that you try to solve when interacting with you know, Web2 and now moving into Web3 or any other you know, product that exists out there. UX UI does doesn't only look at how a product is shown design-wise, but it also touches on how do you make this interactivity and this engagement much better with the people that you're trying to onboard and break these barriers. So even though Web3 is giving creators a push that doesn't necessarily translate in the dApps and the customer onboarding users into the blockchain world, there are certain ways that we can simplify this and make it easier for those from, you know, mass markets trying to enter into our world. I think sometimes we forget how involved we are in blockchain and in crypto that we don't really realize that there's a whole other world out there that is waiting on you know certain touch points to be able to interact with certain levels of, of the blockchain. I don't know if most of you remember, but when PayPass was introduced, people found it hard enough to adapt literally to tapping a card onto a machine. There were a lot of users who or a lot of conspiracy theories that came out that said, you know, how does this work? What does it mean? Can you steal my identity? Can you steal my money? What does that mean? So if you look at it and you break it down from tech to user journey and user onboarding, that in itself took a very long time. And essentially all it was, was just taking a card and tapping it onto um, a machine, a POS machine. So now add to that a new layer where you have things such as wallets, such as, you know, um, again, dApps, such as, um, you know, Web3 integrations or APIs that need to be infused. It becomes kind of difficult for people to assess what that is going to look like. Seamless interactions and integrations with pain points are very, very important when you're looking at building on Web3, especially if you want mass user adoption to occur. You need to build from a user perspective rather than a developer perspective. And I know that sometimes that might be difficult, especially since blockchain in itself is very much dev focused and dev fueled. So some ways that you can start paying attention. One, again, build from a, build from a design perspective, not a developer perspective. And the best way to do that is to actually start tapping into creative directors or people who can build out a customer journey for you and what that would look like. The reason for this is not only are you simplifying the process for yourself, but you're also making it easier to then interact and adapt with others within the space. Um, I know sometimes things can be a bit clunky in the blockchain world, and especially when you have to explain to a lot of people what that means. You know, I think the amount of times I get asked, what is a wallet? Um, overtakes the amount of times that people might understand what an NFT is, or even now, what is the metaverse? Uh, add to that layer, the metaverse itself, you are asking people to interact with things such as avatars, such as other cities or, or domes or worlds that people are going to be tapping into. You want that journey to include less barriers of entry. Over at Zilliqa, we're paying a lot of attention uh, to that because one, if you look at our marketplace that we are launching the recently named Rialto, uh, we are looking at bridging the gap between the physical and digital worlds, meaning we do want a lot of people to be onboarded into our world and very limited issues happening. So the best way to do that, you need to think of a couple of things. One, you need to explain what a wallet is and how it operates for traditional artists. Um, I'm simply speaking now from an NFT perspective, right? What is a wallet? How does that work? What is minting and what is that process? Uh, interacting with the smart contract or any level of minting that occurs can be difficult for a person 
in the world outside of crypto trying to venture in. So streamlining that and making it very easy to understand comes with a lot of education. And the best way to educate people about blockchain in itself and in general is to simply talk about, you know, one, how does that happen? Two, how do you interact with it and how, what is the beneficial for you to be as a user? And thirdly, it's the design process in itself. I'm a big fan myself of design processes. I think they really help in elevating not only a, a product, but in also how you can gather feedback and data on where your customers or where your users are interacting with your product. Um, anyone that comes from a design background would understand the importance of, you know, let's say in Web2, you would have heat maps when it came to websites because that helps you understand where your users would drop off or how they would interact with your site that you're putting out there. Um, moving into Web3, how do we translate that? You know, um, if you look at the metaverse, you are probably able, not probably, but you can, this, you can tap into these avatars and see how they are interacting with your world and where they are moving along. 100%, we are probably not at that level yet because the metaverse in itself is a new, is a new world. So expecting, precedence or data to be there for you to bank on is kind of unrealistic. Uh, so the best way for you to do that is 100%, you know, to start planning into your strategy, how can you start making this process easier for everyone involved? Not only for you as a developer or for you as a project manager or for you as an owner, but for your user. So always approach everything you're doing with a user first perspective. How would I interact with this product? if I didn't understand it 100%. And, you know, coming from a background of tech myself, I do understand that that is hard to do, uh, especially if you have to remove yourself and look at it from the other perspective. Sometimes you can be too infused in your strategy and your world to see that. So blockchain in itself definitely needs to have a massive, massive, massive um, attention drawn towards how UXUI fits into all the processes, all the dApps and all the projects that are being built, especially if you look at gaming, you know, gaming world in itself has a lot of uh, touch points or a lot of uh, gamified aspects where people are interacting and there are social aspects to it. Um, take any game and transfer it into the blockchain, into that world. It does require a certain level of design and a certain level of element. You know, you wouldn't want to be playing a game that looks like the snake game from the Nokia N95, <laughs> even though that is a lot of fun. But if you actually want to translate it, you do have to now add a level and a new layer of design on top of it that makes it appealing for others to want to tap into it. So, you know, I'm very more than happy to take on any questions. I can't actually see what the questions are, if there are any coming in from the side, but... Um... Hi again, yes, a really, really great talk, like especially addressing like the fear around change, like people being scared of contactless, like people are always scared, they hear blockchain, and a lot of people are scared. So having that user experience take on things really it is a really important matter. Uh, I'll take over to some questions. We've got a couple here. Um, we've got, how do you bridge the user experience from 2.0 to 3.0 and to create a seamless experience? That's a very good question. Okay, so, you know, it really depends on what you are trying to bridge. If you have e-commerce and you want to take, let's say, e-commerce from 2.0 over to 3.0, um, you really need to understand, one, what platform you're using to do that. So, you know, are you bringing this into the metaverse? Because if you are, then you have to look at that layer and see how they allow you to do it. Because, you know, are you going to have pop-ups? Are you going to, is it going to be an in-metaverse experience? What is that going to look like? Always start from web three and then work back to you know web 2.0 because that would make it easier for you sometimes you know putting aside let's say e-commerce what are the bigger pain points that people have coming from 2.0 over to 3.0 which is wallets how does that wallet integrate with every day do they need to download another app what does downloading it look like is it hard to access when they do download it do you have directions on how to use it how do you set it up so, you know, it's just these key points that you need to reference to make it easier. So I would definitely recommend working backwards. So starting from 3.0, what does that look like? And then translating it over to bring it over from 2.0. Perfect. That's great. And then we have from Ahmed. He's asking, are you a designer yourself, Sandra? I'm a user experience designer, but not sure how to design for 3D environment. Seems a different set of skills. Would you say it would be different? Another very good question. So I am a designer. Uh, I do have a design background. I'm currently not a designer myself, but that is 
I, I did graduate with a design degree, so um, yes and no, because I don't do it right now. Um, it's always good to have certain skills, especially when you're venturing in this world. So if I look at my background, um, Ahmad, I, I am a designer. I do have a tech background as well um, amongst you know advertising, marketing, and a couple of others. So one piece of advice I can give you is if you're looking at venturing into the 3D environment and you know, good job on doing that, I think that's an amazing transition to make, especially at this point. Start looking at how you can utilize Blender, Clow, Marvelous um, for designing assets. So um, pay a lot of attention to how you can actually start rendering items. So a lot of your designs, when you build them, if you can start reference a lot of, um, there's a lot of free kind of courses on, I think they're called Coursera, Udemy and things like that, or even YouTube. If you do reference them, they should give you, or even Blender themselves, you know, they do give you courses on how you can take your elements and your assets and transfer them into these 3D environments. But um, definitely a very good question. I'm very happy to know that you're looking at transitioning into that because that's the biggest wave that's up and coming. For Zilliqa ourselves, actually, when we're launching the dev stack for Metapolis, so the first L1 metaverse that we've launched, and with opening the dev stack, we're looking at creators for digital assets. And a part of that comes, you know, um, utilizing these platforms that I just said, Blender, Clo, Maya, Marvelous. Super helpful. And thank you for your questions, guys. That's all we've got time for today. If you are really interested in the user experience side of things, uh, at 10 to 5, we have Greg Noodleman from Logic Monitor. He's going to be doing a talk about user experience and AI, so another interesting aspect. Sandra, thank you so much for your time today. I know that you're not well with COVID. I hope you have a really speedy recovery. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye, have a nice Bye everyone. Time. Thanks. Bye. See ya.